I would like to officially welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Thiago. I'm a member of EMA, uh, originally from Brazil, uh, currently based in Germany. And I have the pleasure to be here with my colleague also Manasseh uh, and uh, other volunteers uh, trying to help out in this uh, elections process. Today, we're going to have the presentation of the three presidential candidates. Uh, they are Salis, Felix, and Katarina. Uh, what they are going to do, uh, each one of them is going to present themselves during 10 minutes. They all have the same amount of time. And after that, we are going to have questions. So during the presentations, uh, you can already send us questions. Uh, we are going to have a specially focus on questions that are uh, maybe very specific about a topic, but uh, that uh, but but which apply to the three candidates. Uh, but you can also send in individual questions to one specific candidate, and we're also going to have those answered. Of course, this is a democratic process, and uh, all the candidates have the same amount of rights in this process. So, of course, we expect the questions to be very respectful, uh, to be very uh, reasonable, to be very uh, uh, well thought of, and especially if they can be more objective, it, it's, it really helps us out. So whenever people write here big text, it's complicated because we don't have that much time to analyze the question and even sometimes to understand it. Uh, so do try to focus on questions that are a bit more, a bit shorter, a bit more objective. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have each candidate say a 30 seconds of hello, and then we get to the presentations. Hello, everyone. Perfect. Felix, uh, I thought of we do this. Just 30 seconds. Could you just say 30 seconds of hello to everybody and maybe say where you're from? Just as a first introduction. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Felix. I'm from Ghana, but I'm currently in Johannesburg, South Africa. And um, I'm contesting for MR presidential position 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021, yeah. And thank you all for coming here tonight. My big congrats to all my fellow participants who come this far and they are going to see. Thank you all for the great work you've been doing. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Katarina, can you just say a quick hello as well? I am German, and I think I'll tell you a little bit more about my story and my link to Emma once it's my time to present. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming out to the last session of the presidential debate. And I look forward to telling you about my candidacy in the next couple of minutes. Perfect. Um, I would like to ask if, if that's okay with the candidates, then maybe we just do the opposite uh, sequence that we had this morning. So we could start off with, um, we could start off with Felix, uh, then Salis, and then, uh, and then Katarina, is that okay? With me. It's okay with you, Salis? Yes, it's okay. Okay, so so Felix, if that's okay, could you start your presentation now then? All right, thank you all for the opportunity to present my candidates for you. So, as I stated earlier, this is my vision for my tenure of office. My name is Felix Kornadonko, I'm the current... Can we go to the next slide so that I talk more about it? Mm -hmm. Right, so... I'm, I'm, the, I'm a product of the James Rasmus CC program. I'm serving as the president of the African chapter, and I also serve as vice chair of the course quality advisor. In the past, then I was the chair for the ESA Project Events Task Force, and I've also been a member of the MFM development team. Um, I'd say that there's nothing as powerful as an idea to serve as There are some ideas which I want to share, which I believe that, um, at the stage where we are in the life of the this will help to propel us to the next pedestal where we wish we wish to reach. Can we go to the next slide? All right, so we, I, I acknowledge the great work the current SE has done in forming some good partnerships and agreements with a lot of organizations, but if you look at the SDGs, the, the last, which is a goal 17, also continues to stress the importance of farming partnerships and cooperation of knowledge 
in the attainment of the SDGs. This shows that it, it's not like the importance of common strategic partnerships cannot be overemphasized. That's why I want to continue to build on some other partnerships that will continue to add value to our group. Um, I've read it into two forms, vertical and then horizontal partnerships based on some, um, some experiences I've had in the African chapter with organizations such as Fulbright, Yali, um, with organizations such as UNESCO the, and the Global Partnership for Education and the Global Citizens Program. These organizations are doing something similar, which I believe that when we work together on the global scale, just as we've done on the micro scale in the chapter, it will help us at this time where resources are getting scarcer and scarcer. It will help us to increase the multiplier effect of our programs, as well as have a greater reach at the grassroots. Next slide, please. All right. Another issue which I want to build on is our membership base. Um, in that we have a great organization. There are many people who would have loved to be part of this organization, but they haven't yet been on the platform. Either they are ignorant of its existence or they just lost touch with everything. That's why. One of the best ways, which is to get of getting people, which is word of mouth, I want to take advantage of that through the one is two um, projects where I'm encouraging each person to identify two of his or her friends who are not on our platform and invite them to, to join. From there, it's going to be more of a snowballing project where those who are, been, who are going to join would also be encouraged to bring other two. So from there, we, through word of mouth, we'll be building up our membership base. and. I'm looking at also creating more interaction between our members. Um, formerly, we had the um, Lab Beyond Borders and then the Postal Cards Exchange, where we use those opportunities to help our people interact more as to some of the things which are going on in the community. Through these interactions, they have friends in the uh, EMMA community, per the community development team's prospects. So with this, I want to introduce the online book online book exchange program where members will be encouraged to exchange books amongst each other. It's also to encourage interaction amongst ourselves and the best friends beyond borders where we are going to um, celebrate the kind of friendship which have developed over the years through the platform of Emma, which would not have happened had it not been through Emma. I also want to build um, within the communication within the organization that's from top down and vice versa. And that's I want to introduce the town hall discussions with um, communities of practice and chapters, chapters and members, as well as uh, we'll also rotate we'll, we'll, we'll this with Facebook live discussions. This is to also help us get feedback from the membership base on time so that as we go on with our work, we can be changing things um, ahead of time to avoid situations where it's become too colossal to change at the end. We can move on. Next slide. All right. Another plan I have on for my tenure is, as this is something I discussed initially with my community development team members, that we do a number of things which are in parallel in our sector, in this area of international education. We do some of the, this brilliant webinars. If you look at the number of programs that we have, if we say we are gonna run, let's say on the International Day of Education, a webinar will non-stop, which will propel us into the Guinness Book of Records, looking at some of the programs that we have in our Emma course pack, together with our SR members. And that's a record I want to use something that we, we are used to doing, but then at a different level to push us into the Guinness Book of Records. I also want to transform our web, the webinars that we Currently, mm, the World Economic Forum has made us understand that there are some, some skill sets which have become more core and scarce in the 21st century. And I want our webinars to reflect these ones to put our members at the forefront of um, global development. And that includes design thinking, emotional intelligence, uh, 
um, negotiation skills, and amongst others. And one of the ways in the past, we, what we did with the other chapters was to use WebRest as a form of interchapter collaboration. And I want to build on that as well through this platform. Also, with the help of the mobility program, I, I want us to re-strategize so that we're able to reach more disadvantaged groups, disabled, remote areas, and move, move more into refugees and displaced communities because this has become huge challenges in our current dispensation. Yeah. And ultimately, I just want, I'm creating a, a, a platform where we are all going to be working together as a team. I mean, with my, my fellow contestants and even the outgoing SC members, because there's a lot of skill which is available, which we can harness together to propel our organization to greater heights. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Felix, for your presentation. Um, so, with no further ado, we are going to, I'm going to open here uh, Sally's presentation. Perfect. I hear, you, I hear you loud and clear. So, I'm going to start your 10 minutes now. You can go ahead. Thank you, Tiago. Hello, everyone. My name is Sally Sarah Sultan, and I was born in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago are twin islands located in the southernmost part of the Caribbean region. I graduated from my European Masters in Informatics in 2007. After my Masters, I returned to my home country where I began working in the Department of Computing and Information Technology, where currently I am a lecturer. My Emma Life actually started as a course representative for the European Masters in Informatics program. I then moved on to the internal affairs team when there was a call for the members of the treasury team. I assumed the position of assistant treasurer and that led me to the role of internal funding coordinator. Right now, I'm also the country representative for Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, this year, my latest um, contribution is a collaboration with some EMMA SSRE organizations, including ESN and Garage Erasmus, where we were able to provide the Globe Erasmus 2019 workshop. And my capacity on that particular project was as the e-learning manager. Can you take me to the next slide, please? Now you may be asking yourself, why exactly are you interested in this role? I truly believe that I am a volunteer at heart when it comes to my community, more, both immediate, professional, et cetera. I always look around as to how I can give back and make a difference, of course, in a positive way. I always see that being part of this community of volunteer as not only an opportunity to learn from others, but also an opportunity to share in my experiences. And in particular, I bring to Emma over 20 years of experience in both the industry, oil and gas, financial sector, and academia. I believe in making a difference and I'm very passionate about this. I believe in providing equal opportunities to all and that's where Emma and I are pretty much aligned and on point. Emma also represents to me a channel which promotes education as power, education as a vehicle of change. And I wish to continue to fly that flag of education amongst the community. I also believe in keeping the conversation relevant. And that's one of the beautiful aspects of having an organization that has regional presence and currently in the form of regional chapters whereby we're able to make a difference in our local communities, addressing the current issues and the ones that are essentially affecting the way we as citizens live. I'm also interested in this position because I love my Emma life and I want others to enjoy Emma life as much as I've enjoyed Emma life. Emma has given the opportunity to work in such a dynamic environment 
whereby you're able to work on different time zones, different people, different cultures, and at the same time have a lot of fun. Next slide, please. Now I'd like to present to you what I term the three CP strategic plan. It's based on culture, communication, collaboration, and of course people. And these are the main areas which I propose to focus on once elected. When it comes to culture, I wish to promote greater activism and public advocacy. I wish to increase and improve academic and industry partnerships, both regionally and internationally. I want to promote a cohesive single EMMA brand consciousness. To do that, my targets are to increase the number of spin-off associations, my target being five, to increase the number of partnerships during my tenure, target being 10, and to introduce the evaluation of an external stakeholder perception score and my personal target being 80%. When it comes to communication, I wish to foster digital transformation of the association. I believe that my background in ICT plays an important role in this aspect. I know that we'll be coming along with the community portal soon, and I will be the one flying that flag to ensure that everyone is able to connect using a shared medium. I wish to improve the quality, quantity, and impact of research, innovation, and publication utilizing our community resources. When it comes to collaboration, I wish to establish a physical presence of the association on all continents. I want to establish what I will term physical satellite locations outside of the EU. My target is two. I want to measure both internal and external stakeholder satisfaction. My target, as before with the perception score, is a satisfaction of 80%. When it comes to people, I want Emma to be seen as an association for all, to be the students and alumni association of first choice, to improve the quality of teaching, learning, and logistics with regards to our student exchange programs, to foster creativity, caring, accountability, and a motivated professional team. I would also like to institute a wellness program because I believe that once all is well in terms of our health and our inner being, everything else will work out naturally. So I would like to see more wellness initiatives, both at the local level, at the regional level, and in every meeting and interaction in which we have. I want to increase the number of active members enrolled I want to increase the number of what I term paid up users of the association's products and services. Next slide, please. And most, of it, most importantly, I would like to encourage each and every one of you to turn out for voting, cast that vote, do your responsibility as a member of this association and i look forward to working with each and every one of you regardless of my capacity and i would wish all the vice president and presidential candidates all the best thank you perfect thank you salis you also finished a bit shorter of the time but then maybe uh, katarina can also follow the trend and then uh, uh, all the three of you had the same amount of time speaking. Uh, Salis, can I do the same question as I made this morning? Can you choose a letter between A, B, and C? Because then we have that, that random uh, sequence of questions. I'm going to go with lucky number B. B, okay, so Salis is B, then Manasseh has to remind me after because I always forget, okay. Then I'm also going to ask the Katarina the same question and, and, then, uh, and then Felix gets the, the other letter. Uh, perfect. So, with no further ado, a little bit earlier than we expected, now we will have uh, Katarina's presentation. Uh, so, Katarina, can you say hello? I started being a course representative very early on, and then I started to join the CQAP team as a quantitative analyst, and um, then got very much involved in the strategic team under Shiggy's supervision as well, and this is now the student and alumni unit. 
One, I think, of my main contributions and a great project that I was really involved in and enjoyed was the General Assembly in February this year in Vienna, where I was the co-chair and took charge of many challenges. And I think together with the team, we managed to get together a great event, which had many firsts in Emma's history as well. I'm currently the chair of the Emma Changemaker event, which is planned for September 2019, and it's all about innovation and sustainability. I'll get back to some of those points later on, and um, we can move on to the next slide then. So wh why me? Why um, should I be the one, or why do I think that I am a good fit to be Emma's president in the coming two years? I'm international and intercultural. I speak six languages and I have lived in seven countries. Um, I've already visited more than my current ages, so that's also something very nice. I'm a project manager with experience as a consultant and a researcher at different levels and in different sort of projects out of different sizes. I have been a leader in many situations, but I'm also very visionary and I like to keep in mind what the current challenges are and where whatever project wants to go to. So yeah, some examples for that is my co-chair activity of the General Assembly. And I also was a student representative at the Senatus Academicus of the University of Edinburgh. I'm a volunteer, not only in Emma and the PD strategic team and others, I've also been coaching um, volleyball teams and others. And um, I'm an educator as well. I've myself educated myself in public speaking, and I always very much enjoy giving further some of that knowledge to others. And I've been a teaching assistant in a very leading role of a systems design course in Edinburgh as well. I am a change maker, um, and I think one of the examples, therefore, is that we self-organized an annual meeting in our PhD program because there was no more EMMA funding and we took it in our hands and we made it happen and everybody was very much um, appreciating this. I also, well, together with the team, we managed to have self and coordinator funded students at the GA in February. And um, apart from that, I am a researcher in, and innov innovator and yeah, I think those examples I already said, I have been working as an innovation consultant and I have a number of scientific publications that can prove this. So overall, I think I'm an international team player interested in education, research and innovation. And I am very much convinced about the impact that Emma can make to individuals and to our society on a worldwide level. So yes, move on Tiago, please. So why Emma and where do I see Emma? Now and in the future, Emma is a very central player with great potential. I think we are reaching an international and intercultural community. We are a bunch of very highly educated young professionals and we are engaged in many different things and some of them are also policy making and capacity building. And one of the properties we all also share is that we're very much motivated and we want change to happen and not just think about it but also implement new things. So I'm really looking forward to allowing amazing things to happen. And this is possible thanks to Emma being very central in the sense to having very close relationships to policymakers and governments. We as an association have students, alumni, coordinators and partners which support and provide us in a way. Apart from that, we have those links to the European Commission and other EU delegations as well as our service provider, which in one way or the other support us. And we do also rely and work with several partners all around Erasmus Plus, plus um, later on ESN, ISEC, Garage, Erasmus and Oceans. And I think we can now move on to my plan for the coming two years for Emma, which is the next slide. So my vision for Emma during the next two years. I would like to make Emma a key player and a go-to partner in higher education, research and innovation in Europe and beyond. But nevertheless, we should always keep in mind that our student and alumni unit is the biggest one and that's what we rely on. So I would really, really like to improve student services, to have more seminars and regular also regional meetings. <clears throat> and this will help to then exponentially grow our membership and our network. And especially it will help to get back many of those uh, members that in a way got lost during the change or the mishappening in the community portal. One of the other things I'm really looking into is getting self-sustainable. 
we currently do have the Spark project and um, there should be a follow-up to this. So I'll be working very, very hard together with the current team and the new management board to keep that going and to start building our own budget. Um, this goes along with also establishing best practices in higher education. I have been thankful to be in touch, also thanks to the General Assembly, to be in touch with coordinators who are currently giving us a very great link to ProDGIP. I'm happy to talk about that a little bit later during the questions. And um, overall, again, I think we can broaden our worldwide communication and outreach. And one of the ways we could do that as well is to get involved into international research and innovation projects. We can very much rely on extending or expanding our collaborations with, for example, MCAA, which worked really well earlier this year. And um, there are some examples, and there is interest in having us as a partner in Horizon 2020 and Horizon 20, sorry, in Horizon Europe projects as well. So again, I think professionalizing Emma is one of the key things I would like to focus on together with the new team, and also thanks to the improvements or the changes the current team did. And um, yeah, all of this will allow us to make change, work together, and um, just yeah, keep Emma growing. And yeah, I'm also relying on the community to make those things happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you as a German kept it in time, but now you, you still have uh, about almost two minutes left. Um, would you like to answer a question maybe already? Or how would you yeah, like I'm to happy to take questions now, but I'm also or happy to can you, can open you think the of, floor. Can you think of anything else you'd like to maybe go more into detail? Um, I think I've captured what I wanted to share. One of the other things which might make me one of the ones doing a really good job in this position is that I have been working really closely with the current steering committee. I am involved in some of the communications with the commission, but as well with the service provider. So I've seen how um, several things work. I have myself the experience, I have myself um, assisted in winning um, funding projects over the last years. And this is just also, these are some of the details I would really like to um, to bring forward for the, for the next, um, yeah, in the two years that I will be hopefully given the chance to, to, to lead Emma forward. Perfect. Yeah. So that's that ends up your time here. Uh, now I would like to invite Pepri. He's also here, one of our organizers, and he has uh, been dealing with the uh, also the, the individual questions we got from uh, the audience. Pepri, can you say hello? Hello, guys. So we have one individual question then for Felix. Uh, he's going to get one minute. Then we got individual question uh, after for Katarina and then for um, for Salis. And then after we we do another round. So these are these are uh, specific questions for the candidate, not just uh, generic questions as we've been doing so far. Uh, so Pepri, can you uh, read the first question to Felix then? Okay, this question goes to Felix. Uh, for the Web GA, although you were the president of the African chapters and the vice chair of CQAB, none of these two teams leaders proposed your name to be invited to the GA. All the only after the, we secured funding and wanted a fair representation your name was proposed by someone else. And even then you did not manage to proactively engage with SP to get your visa letter. How can the EMA community trust that you will do a good job when your team leaders are not trusting your performance? Okay. I hear you can go ahead, Felix. All right. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the, um, Pepe for the question. So in um, the by, um, as Rightly still, I'm the president of Afghan chapter and vice president for CQAB. So in CQAB, as you can see, this year we are short of budget. So in CQAB, what I did was to give space to my colleagues in CQAB so they can attend GA and then go on the slot of the chapters. But then for the chapters, we are told to wait, we'll be sent the invitation at a particular time. And my invitation came very late. When it came, I did apply for the visa, but then I was told I would be receiving the visa at the time when the G had already started. So I had to explain the situation to the president because you have to be there at the beginning of the GA. And that would be like causing financial loss to the organization. So I, I did 
I did collaborate with um, the Emma Wazisha project. You can check it online. We did all that we are supposed to do. So start with the presentation. So I suggested that another person do the presentation on behalf of um, Emma Wazisha project. Yes. Yeah. So now, was, however, there was, was one only minute. That Sorry, that was yeah. the one minute, Felix. The, the, later, you can go back to the question when you get more time. So then okay. we're going to have, uh, thank you, we're going to have now an individual question. Uh, Papri, do you have an individual question for uh, So, Katarina and then Salis, yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Papri. Uh, yeah, second question is goes to Katarina. Uh, you are a very new volunteer. What differentiates you from the other two candidates and why you should be elected, which other two might now see? Uh, Emma ha and then uh, the, another one, Emma has a community of 20,000 members. What can you bring to Emma that Emma does not have already? Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, I think I would like to put it in a positive way. I am a recent member and I got to know Emma in the times of change, but also facing the struggles that we will be addressing in the coming years. So obtaining our own funding is something that I already experienced during the GA and I'm currently looking at for, for the upcoming events. I think I do bring some new spirit and I got the chance to meet many of the new volunteers in February. So that um, makes them know my face and work together. I have been working on many projects. I already got to know many people who are currently very involved. And um, what else do I bring to the community? I am driven, I am passionate. This is something we all bring along. But um, yeah, my closeness to projects, to making Emma sustainable, to be in touch with Brussels, but also, and extremely importantly, the fact that I have been working with the service provider, with people and our contact points in the commission. I have already established um, contacts to coordinators, and there are many, many things coming up that I am establishing already at the moment. So I think these are the assets that I would like to work and build upon in the next two years. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, you went a little over the one minute. I'm sorry, I forgot to say. Uh, so then one uh, individual question for Salis. Do you have one, uh, Pepri? Yes, uh, this following question is coming, uh, goes to Salis. You mentioned your KPI for partnership is 10. Do you think that is uh, less or too much? And another follow up, did you know Emma has already secured about 50 partnership during the mandate of this current? And then uh, another following question regarding this: With no funding, how does him, uh, how does you manage to achieve to achieve all this high ambition? Uh, already, this team has achieved over 40 partnerships, and uh, your ambition is uh, only 10. Well, there was there was more than one question, but then uh, Salis, you can choose whatever you 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 prefer to answer. And then your minute uh, starts now. Well, thank you very much, Thiago. I would like to try my best to consolidate the answer. Um, yes, the ambition is high, but I always believe in striving for, for, for the stars, the universe, the everything. Um, I'm a dreamer at heart. Dreamer not to say that I'm not a realist because at the end of the day, the job has to get done. I understand the key, the, the indicators that I propose seem to be less than what is currently in existence. Um, what I personally meant with regard to those values was the increment that would be done during um, my term if elected. And I am building on what was done already by previous SCs, and I'm looking at making particularly an impact within the regional chapters with regards to um, establishing Emma's presence and partnerships. Thank you. Time, perfect, one minute. Um, so thank you very much. I mean, this is this is kind of, uh, we have within this hour, as I said, uh, managed to have the three presentations, managed to have generic questions, and then also individual questions. So, uh, you know, all in all, uh, this was not a unsuccessful operation. I would like to do, uh, uh, you know, for those who want to stay, we would like to do another two rounds of questions. And then we finish here. Uh, and then uh, in about five hours from now, we're going to have the same uh, debate take place again in a similar similar structure. Hopefully, uh, things go a bit faster uh, as we have learned to use the tool better. Um, so now I'm going to open here. I had another generic question. Uh, I personally think that focus on the generic questions makes the, the, 
the process a bit uh, a, a bit less uh, a bit more fluid um well let me uh, one here i think we haven't heard about this so how will you ensure emma's financial stability in the next years given the increasing numbers uh, number of members and how have you contributed to this process so far so talking about the financial sustainability sustainability uh, sustainability of the of the organization uh, so in the next years considering the increasing number of members how uh, how are you going to deal with that uh, and how have you contributed to to this process so far so we go back you see here on my list we go then to this uh, sequence of abc now uh, a being felix right so felix could you address this uh, this question here in one minute then hello Standing thanks for this then. beautiful question so <laughs> hello hello yes yes go go ahead oh, all right so thanks for this beautiful question so what i'm doing is one increasing the funding base so uh, we've mentioned that our members are increasing so as they are increasing then the options for funding also increase secondly the opportunities for funding giving members also the options to contribute where they can because we are alumni we have members who are in the position to help and they are willing to help and want to give such people the opportunities to help as i also mentioned we are trying to form now both vertical and then um, horizontal strategic partnerships this is another way to help us like we've done in the african chapter last year we won um, we won some funding from United Nations for the SDGB lab. We formed these partnerships with DAD, with Yali, and this helped us not to spend so much, but then do the most of the little that we had. And this is the same approach I'm hoping to now escalate to the wider EMA. Also do with, with regional chapters. When we had regional inter-chapter collaborations, it saved us a lot of resources. And these are things I'm building Time. on. Perfect. One minute. So then we have next uh, Salis, right? Yeah. Salis, then. Uh, yeah, now I hear you, Salis. Okay. In terms of the financial sustainability in the next coming years and the contributions that I've made thus far, um, I would like to say that I was able to acquire the first ever sponsor for the GA that took place in 2016, and I believe it was the first sponsor overall for Emma. As I said before, I believe that the new currency is data and knowledge, and just as I practice locally in the local chapter for Trinidad and Tobago, I use this creativity with a mix of data and knowledge to mobilize the resources that we have. In the past, I was also able to launch the Emma store. For me, that was an opportunity to understand the internal workings of the organization, the different teams. Um, we had our branded product, the Emma hoodies. That was a, a, a means of getting members engaged in their own brand. And Fine. that, okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Then we managed to have also more questions. Uh, so, Katarina, you also have the floor uh, for the same specific question about the financial sustainability of the of Emma and your plans. Thank you. Yeah, I also wanted to mention the Spark project, which is currently underway and it's going in a great direction. The three girls are looking into opportunities, and I think uh, positively quite low hanging fruit is getting an operating grant, which, uh, with the help of the Belgian government, could then also very quickly lead to two people working at an EMA secretariat in Belgium for EMA. Um, how have I proven that um, I am able to push these efforts forward? During the General Assembly, we got to get a couple of sponsors, some of them just supplying some little help, others also chipping in financially, and all of this made a great environment. How am I looking forward to establish this even further? I think making use of the partners that we're already having, but also um, trying to reach out locally and um, getting support there will help us to start building our own budget and growing to then also be approached by others that see our benefit. Perfect, within time. Um, we're gonna have one more specific question here, but not a specific, uh, one generic question for all candidates. 
based on the fact that you folks are not from Asia, we got a, a specific question about Asia. So I think it's fair to address that. I think it would be interesting for every, for all the, the, the Asian people uh, uh, that are watching us. So we are going to do then the opposite uh, sequence, okay? Because then it's the same amount of time you have to prepare and so on. So then we're going to start off with Katarina. And the question is, is, is this. Um, any specific plans focusing on South Asia? Uh, collaboration with Asia focus heavily on Southeast Asia at present. So this is kind of a very specific question, uh, and maybe a tricky one. Uh, but then, Katarina, you have one minute to comment then about the, the plans and the relationship with Asia within EMA. Sure. I think all regions are equally important to us. And there's just one example I want to highlight if it comes to Asia. Um, you all know that we're moving away from chapters and um, we are moving towards campus Erasmus. And one of the current um, examples or one of the first countries where this is rolling out is the Philippines. And we see really nicely how things get together and how we will have not only course representatives, but also our structures being in place. So I think um, reaching out specifically to that region can help us to get established there a little bit more and having good examples from all across the world will then support the efforts worldwide and the Asian example or the Southeast Asian example could then be used to propel into other regions such as Central or South America where we also really need to grow at the moment. Perfect, yes, within time. And uh, so, Felix, uh, then you have one minute uh, to answer the same question. Can you say hello? Hello. Yes, I hear you, Felix. You can, you can right. talk now. Yeah. So, in my presentation, I did mention about Southeast Asia, the Young Southeast Asian Initiative, Leaders Initiative, because I had this ambition to forge stronger relationship with the um, youth groups in the Southeast Asian region because I realized that the kind of, I realized that most of the support has also, they've not really been in that scope. So now building at the grassroots with these organizations, which are also into education, is one way for us to, uh, to kind of, uh, our impact, to skyrocket our impact in that region. That's, I, I realized that the young Southeast Asian this initiative is one very good example for us to start with and then to get to the rest on the on the ground perfect within time felix so now we have salis uh, address the same uh, question thank you tiago just I just a second i just let me just start here uh, just a second because i've been trying to put the up the picture of you guys when you talk uh, so there it is okay you can start now in general for the different chapters my plan is to highlight the work coming out of each chapter and for the southeast asia i personally find that we can draw a lot of good practice you guys have a lot of programs that are very highly visible you all have mobilized your what i will say workforce or talent and you're able to produce an impact locally and i wish to harness that good practice throughout the rest of emma I would also like to say that whereas I am from the Latin American Caribbean region and I have studied in, in, in Europe, I believe being president will give me the opportunity to understand the cultures more intimately that I haven't gotten an exposure to. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, so we are going to finish the session now with just, uh, I, I think Papri, you have uh, more individual questions. But if we if you keep just one one question per person and maybe try to focus on questions that are a bit more objective, uh, because then I think we can uh, we can just have one more individual question for each candidate, and then we 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 end end uh, this first session of the debate here. And I'm glad we we got to yeah to have questions and to have people talk at different times and the microphones are working. So I think ever thank it thanks uh, to everybody for participating. Uh, Papri, Papri, do you have uh, more individual questions? uh yeah because then we would go so let me share my so then this is this is the sequence we would have here individual so we would start then with felix then katarina and then end with uh no no a b oh, oh my lord 
B is Salis, right? So then Salis, um, Catalina, and then Felix. Uh, so the first, if you have, a, uh, do you have any individual questions for uh, for Salis? Yes. We otherwise, start with otherwise, I have I have more I have more generic questions as well. If in case we don't have any individual ones, we have many questions for uh, individual question for the candidates. Ah, okay, perfect. So can you read uh, one for Salis, and then uh, you have one minute to answer. Okay. Uh, for Salis, you set up consultancy database project. Why it never saw end of channel, although we you were in charge for more than two years? Here we go. Thank you very All much right. for that. Okay, what well, so one minute starting now? Tiago, can you hear me? Salis, yeah. So you can you you can start now. Then one minute now. Okay. Yes, the consultancy database was actually the one of the passion projects of myself. It's actually in, it has been designed, it has been developed, it's, it's in the rollout phase. I was able to actually pilot it in my home university as part of the UE Engage the Society project. And that's where I talked about the meshing of the two worlds. For me, in terms of it's roll out into Emma. This is the time. It's ready. It's been tested, and I'm happy to share it and launch it and promote it within the team. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. So then we have. Uh, I keep on making this mistake of forgetting. So C was Katarina. Okay. So then, do you have an individual question for Katarina? You can read it, Pepri, and then Katarina, you can say hello, and then I'll say you can start. Okay, so uh, this question is go, goes to Katarina. Uh, how will you work with the new partners uh, Emma is planning to, to have? Yes, hello. Okay, you can start now. Yes, thank you. Um, how to work with partners? I think it really very much depends on what type of partners these are. So getting them involved from where they interests lie mainly is one of the key things I would like to look at to make that partnership um, useful, but also beneficial for everybody involved. There is a partnership team in Emma, which should be expanded upon as well with a new structure and the management board will have a representative. We already have enough information and brochures designed. They are currently already being sent out to potential partners. And these are partners starting from coordinators, but also whole consortia. Um, there's private, there's also universities that are very much interested in MS activities, NGOs and um, other similar institutions such as MCAA, ESN, ISEC. And um, yeah, I think having different strategies for all those different strands is what I would like to see and which will surely give us um, fruitful partnerships in the future. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, Pepri, you can go ahead and uh, read one question. For uh, Felix. Okay, one question for Felix. Uh, for a marathon, you could not rally enough volunteers to, for Africa. With the current climate of EMA, ESA, how can you engage the whole EMA community? Uh, Felix, can you say hi? Hi. Hi. So, yeah, you can start now. All right. First of all, I want to say a bit, uh, it's, it's false when you say this. this that uh, we couldn't rally enough volunteers for Africa. It's interesting to know that Africa was the only chapter that produced a whole e-marathon project. And fortunately, the one who is actually coordinating this project, Tiago, is part of the e-marathon project and can attest to it. Aside that, we were able to get partners from across the continent who are helping us with this project. And we've been actually been chasing um, our part, um, the central office as to what to do next, but we've not been getting replies. So it has kept us at bay because we don't know whether to give the funds straight to the school or we wait for um, the central office to tell us what to do. This has been our, our challenge, but then we believe that it's a human institution and we're all learning from this. So this is, we are, we are happy with this and we are happy for, we are waiting for them to tell us what next they want us to do for the stage of e-marathon. Right, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I mean, we are we have gone over uh, 22 minutes uh, over the time we had planned for this debate. All in all, I think you 
was uh, very successful because we did we did manage to hear everyone and ask questions to everyone. Our next session starts in less than five hours from now. If you wanna, you know, watch it again, or if you wanna tell your Emma colleagues to watch it, I think it's very very important that people participate in the debates, that they they vote, uh, they, they they have registered to vote. Uh, and uh, yeah, so thanks everybody for participating. Thanks Prepri for the individual questions. Thanks Manasse uh, also for uh, participating as an organizer of this event here and dealing with the, the candidates. And uh, this has been recorded and we will share the recording after with you. So you can share it also with those who couldn't uh, participate today. So I can maybe just, well, just to close up, we could just get a goodbye from uh, all the candidates starting then with uh, uh, Felix, then Salis, and then Katarina. Just say a quick 30 seconds goodbye then. All right. I just want to say a very big thank you all for your patience and being here to listen to um, our presentation. I look forward to working with you in the next administration and a big congrats to all my um, fellow presidential aspirants and vice presidential candidates. Thanks also to the outgoing EC. Thank you all. Thank you. Then Salis, please. Hi everyone, thank you very much for coming out and taking out your time to listen to the presentations and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and don't forget to cast your vote, it's your duty. Very good, yes. And uh, Katarina? Yeah, I think I can only agree with all the others. Thanks for everyone who helping to make this such a success. And I can only say that I'm looking forward to work together with everyone who wants to be engaged and together we can make those things happen. Yes, and for me, Thiago and Manasse and Pepri and all the other uh, volunteers uh, helping out, uh, thank you very much for participating and have a good uh, afternoon, evening, night, uh, morning. Ciao.